So my uh, flight has been delayed by two hours to Hong Kong, which is not ideal. Um, I was supposed to be seeing quite a good friend from like between like 10 and 12 t today. But because now the flight's two hours delayed, that's going to really like jeopardise things. It's kind of like screwing up my day a little bit, which is not good. But um, the positive side to all of this is I get a couple of hours extra snooze, which I guess could be nice. By the way, top tip for uh, travelling, don't fly with Scoop. So the perks of uh, being delayed at Hong Kong is that you meet some wonderful friends. So we met at a fair and like in Singapore at NTU and like the wonderful bags that have been shown off here. And so where can everyone find these lovely bags? Well, these bags are on Etsy, so you can find those. We're Jakuma. So you can find this easily. Yeah, I'll like put a tag in and stuff. Yes. Yeah, really beautiful bags. And these guys have so much personality as well, which just match all the wonderful prints that they do. So it's just so good to find people with print love. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, so the plane was further delayed, so I'm just gonna like what loads of random stuff's going on. I'm just gonna talk about or use this time to talk about Hong Kong. Um, and like, yeah, basically just summarise what Hong Kong meant to the social mercenary and to me. Um, so to start off with, uh, I went to Hong Kong in September last year, 2016, um, and I had the intention of doing this internship. Um, and I, although I learned a lot from this internship, it wasn't really ticking all the boxes for me. I wasn't learning the things I wanted to learn and I wasn't really uh, pushing myself in the way that I wanted to be pushed. So I decided, after speaking to various people about um, different ideas, I decided I'd go ahead with the social mercenary and try and like make it like a thing. Make it, like, see, just where, see where it goes, basically. <coughs> um, Soraya here was like incredible because she was the one that gave me the idea to like branch out into those different areas um, and this is sort of set the foundation for like what we want to do with the social mercenary and that is to basically embed societal values or social values into every business activity that we do and to also empower and encourage other people to do the same so if you're starting a business there's no reason why you shouldn't be thinking sustainably about it and uh, thinking positively about future generations while positively be benefiting the people who are like working for you and consuming your products. <coughs> um, so, yeah. And so then, further developed it more. Um, Ed was a real inspiration here. He um, actually helped design the first social mercenary logo which you can find on the Facebook page. Um, <laughs> it is like amazing what he can do with two hours on paint. Um, and yeah, so that sort of set everything in motion. Like, why do we use a panda? Um, there's a couple of reasons. Which one, pandas are really cool and everyone loves pandas. Um, second reason is that it was a symbol of w WF, uh, World War, World, uh, World Wildlife. Oh, associated um, awful names, but anyway, um, everyone knows what I'm talking about. But pandas have recently um, come out of the like endangered like zone because of all the like positive um, media attention that they've been given, and, like like the focus on conservation for them. And so I really think this is a positive symbol of like what we as humans can do is if the right brand and if the right message is put out there. So uh, I want to help spread that message and also like that's why the panda is like part of the social mercenary. It's, it's uh, a bit of hope at the end of the tunnel basically. Um, Hong Kong, so another inspiration in Hong Kong has been uh, Josh. Josh kind of helped me with like, he basically just like, gave me my, a bit of my entrepreneurial flair and just told me to like, go out and do it. So I actually like would pack a suitcase every day and I'd just rock up at different universities and just literally sell my bags. 
um, and he was the one that really encouraged me to go out there and like talk to different people and like really like be proud of like the products that I had and like to actually like get get sales and like this was a massive improvement on what I'd been doing before. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was it was a lot of fun, um, but it was hard work like having to like drag this trolley about. <laughs> I didn't even book any stalls or anything, so like I was kind of like illegally hawkering on university campuses. So I'd like often I'd get chucked off campus. Um, they yeah, they would be shouting angry Cantonese at me, and yeah, I I just said I was like a an exchange student. I didn't know what was going on. Um, it seems it seems to work okay. Um, and then yeah, I went to, like loads of different trade shows. I went to the Comrade, which is like this five star hotel. Um, and that was where my launch event was, and that was just amazing. I was at this fair with like so many other people, um, and I, at all these markets and stuff, I met so many incredible like and inspirational people. Uh, for instance, I probably talked about this quite a lot and shared a lot of their stuff. But um, Ella Fobo, who recycled Cambodian cement bags, um, or upcycle them, and then put them with Italian leather and sell them like in parts of Europe and Hong Kong. And they've actually done some really cool Adidas trainers, uh, limited edition stuff, which is looking really, really sick. Um, and and I actually, like having just been to Cambodia as well, like, I can understand the need for like this cement upcycling and also like, just, I think it's such a good thing to be like providing them with sustain sustainable employment as well, given the, like the awful time that they've had over the past like 30 years um, it's really good to see like their economy recovering and like people like being much more happy as well um, so yeah overall that's that's kind of Hong Kong in a nutshell um, you're obviously going to meet a few people uh, when, I'm, when I'm there um, and yeah it would be good to say hi to them all and I'm looking really really looking forward to it um, pretty tired though but you had like two hours sleep oh well All right. yeah. uh. okay just landed in Hong Kong uh, it's been pretty sick because I actually got to skip immigration because I'm officially a Hong Kong resident uh, until September so I took like all of three seconds now uh, let's try and find the baggage somewhere Oh my god, the woman at the check-in counter just did me an absolute treat. So I'd booked all my flights completely separately. Um, and just because it works out cheaper, I didn't kind of realise what I was doing. But um, anyway, they've she's checked me into all my flights. So I've got the boarding passes for everything. Um, and so she can make travelling so much easier. I don't have to bring my luggage back out and check it back in again like I just had to now. Because that's been a nightmare and it's meant that I've actually not got, not, I was going to have lunch with a friend, a really close friend, but um, yeah, it's meant that that's not been able to happen. But this is the silver lining, so feeling slightly more positive now. Alright, right, just changed my, just got off the train into Hong Kong station, changed my shirt, uh, so feeling a lot more fresh now. Um, and I'm about to meet Jay, who is like pretty much like a mother to me in Hong Kong, um, so I'm pretty excited to catch up with her. Yeah, everyone meet Jay. <laughs> How are you, Jay? Good! <laughs> so, to see you. so happy to see you! <laughs> yeah. Aww, so sad, so, so I had to rush yeah, back. Yeah, I know, it's such a shame. Like, yeah, pretty good. Which airline were you at? Uh, flew with Scoot. Who oh, was awful. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, so we just had a lovely meal. And Bye, now Jack. it's time to say all goodbye. All the best, yeah. all the best. Oh, Lots of love. Yeah, I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you too. Yeah. Keep in touch. Of course. And of course, come back to yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll sure. be back. Yes. <laughs> well, definitely will be. See you, and mom. And keep calling, keep calling. Keep yeah. Calling. Yeah, your oh. mom in Hong Kong. Oh. Your mom in Asia, actually. Boy. Until you find one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it was awesome seeing Jay. And now the next person I'm going to see is Patrick. Uh, Patrick is president of the Hong Kong alumni. Uh, and I got put through to him through some LinkedIn searching and talking to various people and trying to find jobs in Hong Kong. And actually, it's been amazing. Like when I quit, quit my internship, he really helped me out. Him and the rest of the Hong Kong alumni 
So it's going to be really fantastic catching up with him once again. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to meet in Starbucks and hopefully I'll be able to find him. Okay, so we just met. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, you're in it, mate. You're in it. Uh, hi. So yeah, this is my friend, good friend Mike G, who's from Loughborough. Yeah, representing, Loughborough. Woo! <laughs> representing hockey chanter all around yeah, the world. Hockey, chanter, yeah. <laughs> hockey football club. Yeah. Shout yeah. Out. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this, like, obviously, like, a really close friend from uh, Hong, Kong, Hong Kong times. Um, definitely helped out with the social mercenary, including uh, getting stuck in an elevator with a box full of uh, products. <laughs> <laughs> That's three jokes. Uh, yeah, so we're just gonna hang around. Like, um, so obviously we we're all Loughborough, and then like Patrick's Loughborough alumni president. So like, yeah. So we've just been like reconnecting, basically, which is gonna be pretty sweet. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so uh, Patrick and I have just been chilling by the wonderful harbour. Um, Mike's just had to go for a bit, but uh, now it's time to say goodbye to Patrick. Bye bye. Yeah, bye Patrick. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. It's been good catching up and obviously we're gonna stay in contact as well. Stay in contact, yeah. We'll do lots of luck for our alumni stuff and help help out with that sort of project. Okay, so. have a good trip. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> bye. bye. <laughs> Wow, so I uh, met some pretty cool people already today. Um, and now I'm about to see Kaz, who um, she like did design at Loughborough. And um, yeah, she's like a really good lacrosse player and she's like been in some really cool tournaments and stuff. So I'm gonna catch up with her. Um, which is gonna be fun, so you'll see her in a minute. Okay, everyone, so this is Kaz. Kaz, welcome to the vlog. Hi. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> So, look, uh, Kaz is in her lacrosse kit. <laughs> Looking very flash. She's got training for after this, so luckily we've got yeah, a chance to catch up. Yeah, you didn't get me waiting for this guy here. <laughs> the all-time important person. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> so yeah, we're just up on the top of IFC here. It's like really nice, awesome views. I'll show you in a bit. But uh, yeah, catch you in a bit. <laughs> Okay, so I'm walking through up, up through the streets of Hong Kong, um, and yeah, it's pretty fun. But I'm gonna go try and visit the place I interned at. Uh, I don't even know if anyone's gonna be there, but I just kind of want to say hi. And I don't know I feel like I've got to do it. Like we kind of left on bad terms um, when I quit, and I don't know. I just want to maybe like see what's happening now, and just like. I don't know, to see it, maybe clear the air a bit. But uh, yeah, as I say, I'm pretty nervous. But we'll just see what happens. So, this is where I used to work. And um, yeah, I used, <laughs> yeah, and I used to make these posters over here. So yeah, um, done that, been, in business and uh, yeah, so I, um, it was a little bit, it was like okay, I think it was glad, glad I did that, um, but yeah, she didn't like, she didn't want to be filming on camera the box, so yeah, whatever. So I think it's like good for me just to go back and like clear the air, like seeing how everything's changed, hasn't changed too much. Um, yeah. So I'm just waiting for my buddy Mike um, at the Hong Kong Football Club. And mate, this place is so sick. I mean, just look at the view behind me. It is really, really cool. So we're just like, it's currently about seven o'clock and my flight's at 8.45. So we're literally gonna get a quick drink, have a few moments together catching up and stuff um, before, yeah, before heading off to uh, Bangkok. And then from Bangkok on to Nairobi. So yeah. A lot of flying ahead, but uh, hopefully it'll be nice just to have a beer uh, and catch up, which will be sweet. Sweet. So the boys. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers <man. laughs>
Okay, so it turns out that it wasn't the best idea. And, uh, <laughs> I might actually miss my fight. Uh, but it's okay. Uh, yeah, I don't Exercise between the flights, right? <laughs> so, it's what coaches for. <laughs> okay, the social mostly rock sucks. Good for running, good for exercise. I'll see you in the UK, I beat you or something. Hopefully we'll make this this plane. Fuck! Shit! When you follow in there, I fucking made it! Oh my god! Literally the last person on the plane. Okay, Bangkok, here we come. 